Hi everyone, here's an introduction for you about the sewing machine software that we're going to be using for our PLC programming. So when you load it up, this is the sort of view that you can expect. So we've got a little picture of our PLC and as we move the mouse around, it highlights a few different things for us. The different models that are available, it's got a, a whole list of them over on the right hand side. Um, in my one, I've set it up so that it automatically loads the particular model that we use in our, um, in our classes here. So you can see the code number down here is the TM221TE24T, uh, and it gives a description about what the different um, the different parts of that PLC are. We'll get more into that later on. Um, but when you're getting started, it doesn't matter too much which PLC you're using. But if you want to be consistent with what we've got here at Wintech, um, you can search through the list down there and find that particular code number. Here we are. So that's the, the one that we're working with. Um, the other thing that can be helpful is here we can see a list of the inputs that are available with this PLC and we can give them names as well. So if we give this, this first input a name is button one, oh, although I spelt it a bit wrong, anyway, um, you get the idea. And that means that any time we want to use that particular input in our program, we can use the name instead of the actual, having to type in the, the address. Let's try and get the spelling right. T -T -O. Yep. And it converts everything to capitals, it's just the way that it works. Um, the addresses here, it gets quite fussy if you are typing in the addresses. Um, so it's percent i, zero, dot, and then zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Um, if you miss out the dot or if you put in an extra dot, then it tends to get itself confused. So it might be easiest to, to set up the inputs that you want to use in here, and then after that, you can just use the names. So where we create our programs is on the next tab over. Ah, it reminds me, yes, I want to apply the changes. So to create programs, the simplest is just to grab an input, throw it in here, and under that symbol space is we can type in, or we start typing and it shows us the options. So button one, that was what I created before. And yes, it automatically gives it that address. Now I don't want to do any more inputs, so I'll just create an output. Um, and you see it's got this little arrow symbol, so it's automatically gonna put that one. It'll jump it over to the right side and joins it up with the line. So that's really handy. Uh, for the outputs, I haven't created any symbols yet. So let's just call this out one. And it says no suggestions because it doesn't know what I mean. If we go enter, um, does not exist, so I have to type in an address. So you can see this one's a little bit harder. Um, we have to use Q for the outputs, and we'll just select the first one out of that list. Yeah, that's allocated. Um, so if you want to allocate more of these ones, you can also see over on the left hand side, we can get a list of the inputs that we've got set up, and we can get a list of the outputs as well. The other thing that's really handy to use, um, because we've got a pretty limited number of the inputs, so here we go from zero up to, is it 12 or 13? Yeah, 13 is the last one. So in total we've got 14 inputs, but sometimes that's not gonna be enough. Or you want to use something as kind of a temporary value. Um, so what we have available as well are these internal memory bits. If I create one of them with the name mem1, and down here, hiding under there, there we go, is apply. So now I can put another contact in here, use my name I just created, m1, and there we go, it gives it the address. If you're wanting to do parallel type of um, circuits, then we use the little pencil icon up here, um, so then we can draw a line going downwards and create something else going in par parallel. Um, I guess a little recommendation for parallel things is it's fine doing parallel branches with the inputs, um, but not very often do we do parallel branches with the outputs. So I try to avoid that if you can. Um, yeah, As always, there's some exceptions to, to these rules, um, but that's probably a good starting point is yeah, just using the parallel branches with your inputs but not with your outputs for now, until you learn a bit more. You learn about the rules and then you learn how to break the rules. That's how it goes. 
Um, I'll just delete that one with the little eraser tool. Okay. So we've got our program in there and we want to simulate it in the computer. So it's a little two squares icon up here. It just takes a few seconds to think about that. All right, so it brings up this extra little green window here that we can move around. And you can see it's got the flashing thing here for run, meaning that it's not actually running the program at the moment. So again, up on the top toolbar, we've got a start or play button. So we'll hit that one. But a, a warning message pops up. So we go OK. And now, yeah, program's running. So to run the simulator, the numbers in here represent the numbers of the inputs. So we've used input number zero up here. Um, so either we can control it with these little buttons that show up. We can force it to a one value. Or we can force it to a zero value. And we can see um, the colors change on our screen. So green represents active. Oh, it's got a bit slow just now. Come back. Force to one. Yep. Um, yeah, so green represents that it's active. This one, um, instead of having F for force, it's just got zero and one because it's a, a memory value. It's not a, an external circuit. So that's already on a zero. If we set that to a one, then this type of contact turns off. It's a bit of program through here. Um, and turns off the output, of course. Uh, with the outputs, generally we don't want to try to force them because it's going to mess with the way that our programs are working. Um, yeah, so we'll leave that alone. Um, set this one back to its zero, so the logic turns on here. Because this um, type of logic symbol means do the opposite of. So do the opposite of zero, zero means off. So here doing the opposite means turn on. Uh, the other way we can control this is uh, if I reset that one, that's back to zero. With the numbers in here, I can just click on the number zero and oh, I need to get rid of, have to unforce that. There we go. So I reset that back. And when I click on the number zero, uh, okay, so it's a little bit confused between these two things um, because I was using the, the little force icon there before. Um, so that seems to override what we do with this simulator. So I'd say use one or the other. Um, this little simulator window can be really handy if you're working with a long program. It means you can control all, all of the things in here really close together. There's another method as well that I'll show you a bit later on. But that's probably a good point for getting started. So hopefully that helps you with um, getting used to using this program and um, testing out the simulator. Just stop that, just in the stop button up here. And one other thing that you'll need to do as well is to make more space for making a longer program. So that's our icons up here. We've got either add a new rung or insert. A um, little bit of trial and error, you'll find that one of them goes above and one goes below where you click. So this one gives us a new rung going above. Um, if you want to undo, we can do that as well. So it gets rid of the rung we created and go, yeah, we want to actually add a new one underneath. So there's a few different options there that you can play with. And I'm sure you guys will pick it up pretty quickly. But let me know how you get on.